What would you say is like this big spark of Melo's game? He playing well because he has a little more room to operate. Okay. He is one alpha male now. So he, he's the one guy they're looking to, to score. So if they're not two guys, they're not three guys, he's the focal point at the end of a shot clock to allow him to make decisions. He is. He's playing some stellar, some stellar basketball here. I mean, I really don't have anything to say other than if the Knicks could just get some continuity within their personnel, meaning people not having so many injuries and kind of really getting that combination together long enough to gel and make something happen. More games like what happened against Chicago the other night. What happened? Now, I'm going to tell you this, that, you know, the Knicks – the Knicks didn't get that game. The Bulls did not lay down and hand them that game. You know, that was a great game all the way to the end. You know, Carmelo made some huge shots. He made the shot to take them into overtime. About another, like, almost, what, three foot away from, about another three foot beyond the arc, you know, both times. He's just a, he's just a major playmaker. And in your opinion, on a scale of one to five, and one being the least likely, and five being the most likely, how far do you think these teams will go into the playoffs and why? So, Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, it, it's hard to tell because I think when you go into the, the um, you go into the playoffs, it's about those, about those last five or seven games and how hot you are. So, right now, it would be a kind of a tough test for me, but I'm going to go ahead and give you my I deal with them. I think it's going to be like a four. They're going to make it to the Western Conference Finals. Um, I, I think because they have, they got three guys, you're going to have to double team post. Uh, and, and I think they're getting some more easy baskets with guys like Vermont Session to where they got get a, a lot of easy baskets and everything is not in half court. Nice. Well, I would give them a three because they need those nares. They need those legs. And they also need to have a better than a 500 showing on the road in order to win a series. Okay. Boston Celtics. Go easy. It's my team. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say three with them. They're, they're kind of a wild card in the East because mm -hmm. on a given night with rest, because now you're not going to play back to back games. That's true. They can play those. They can play that big four, and that big four, I'll I'll put them up against just about anybody in the league. Very. So true. I would say a three. I actually agree with you as far as a three. You know we, you know these guys are iconic in their own right, but you know just like with the Lakers, they need those that nair the legs. A lot of times it boils down to win and back to back games for the more um, veteran players is hard on the body. But I do believe that for, for a game in a series with at least a day in between for the games to rest, that they can make some things happen. Uh, they were barely expected to be the seventh and eighth seed. They actually, from, from the first third of the season, they actually hovered between the seventh and eighth spot. And at Bex, they were sixth. And I actually didn't think they'd make it past the sixth. But right now, they're currently fourth um, in the East. So that attributes a lot to their hustle game and they, they realize the season's winding up and they're that kind of show me team. So I'm with you on the three. We'll see what happens though. Uh, San Antonio Spurs. I'm going to say four and a half. Really? Okay. Tell me. I think four and a half because they have experience. They have youth. They got shooters mm -hmm. and they have a guy and post that you have to double. Yeah, they do have the complete package. Uh, Miami Heat. Uh, they're they're solid four and a half. I, I would put them on four and a half as well because I don't think that anybody's going to stop them in the East. They have what it takes, but they just have to not choke when it when it when it's all said and done. They start celebrating too early with Dallas, and that's what got them uh, without a championship last year. They won, a, they won a couple in a row. They start celebrating and crying on the court and start making all these acceptance speeches and then lost another three in a row to lose the championship. So, uh, four. So what you're saying is Dallas didn't win the championship. Miami lost the championship. 
You know what? Much respect to the veteran squad, um, the Dallas Mavericks. They, they definitely show that they deserve to take the title. But it really was Miami's championship to lose, and they did. They had optimal opportunities, but they just were the younger team. And they, they're hot-headed, and they get out of their groove very easily. It's like when they're winning, they're winning. But if they're not hot, they get to pouting and crying and getting technicals and all of that. That's just, you know, that's just what they do in Miami. And if they can just become more level-headed, I, I honestly feel like they've learned a lot from last season. They definitely are playing a lot better. But it's just something about them. There's still that choke factor there. If they make it to the finals, it will be a Western Conference victory. If Chicago makes it to the finals, Eastern Conference victory. Mark my words. Those are my predictions. Okay, uh, Chicago Bulls. Chicago Bulls? Yes. Uh, I would say a four. Solid four. But I just, but it all, it all is on whether or not uh, um, Derrick Rose is healthy and, and, and how efficient he's going to be and if he becomes worn down. I really think that they, this is their year. Uh, but it is a it is a health thing. It just seems like overall throughout the league, there's so many back and forths. Because look at what happened with the Clippers with just one major injury. It went from them being uh, a possible at least a Western Conference contender or champion to not so sure they'll make it past the first round at this point because they don't have any depth. So I do wish the best for Mr. Rose. He's been beat up quite a bit. He's had several injuries, and they've been pretty serious. I know that he's been out. Um, like, like I believe it was like um, 16 games for a groin injury. So I'm hoping that all is well with him. He struggled against New York, and hopefully tonight when they replay them at home, um, he makes a much better showing. But I give the Bulls 4.5. Last but not least before I have you go, who do you think will be the surprise team that's under the radar and has the potential to do well in the postseason? A surprise team? Yeah. I like, don't know if it would be a surprise, but the team who did very well last year, uh, Memphis, I, I think Memphis, they're dangerous because they have a solid, solid post guy. You have to double team, and they're just, I just, I just think that there's an opportunity for them to do something. And I, I think Memphis, again, as a fire seat, I don't know how much of a surprise that would be. Memphis as a, this is going to be tough, a tough out because they got two legitimate big guys. They got pretty strong uh, perimeter, and they got it. They got a pretty soft fence. Thank you so much for your time. And if you have any final words or anything you want to say before you go, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Uh, look for look for my, my, the website coming up soon. Uh, uh, Ann Cooper speaks. And uh, if if you if you uh, a motivational speaker at your your university or your high school, you can uh, you can, you'll be able to find me on Dwayne Cooper Speak. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned to Mono Sports. We'll have more with Mr. Brandon Hassel.